at least one top five. Oh my god, we picked Elliot Friedman has just tweeted out, it seems very likely that the Stags are working to try and get Islanders prospect Michael Dal Cole. More to come. But before we get into that, I just have to say this is the meme of the year. What's going on everybody and welcome back to episode number three for your Saskatchewan Stags. Now in the last video we started off with some simulation and we're not doing that great. 52 points in 62 games, but it's not all bad. It's not all bad because the Nashville Predators have 56 points. Now Nashville, if you remember in episode number one, I believe it was, that they traded us their first round pick. So potentially we could have two lottery picks and we're gonna find that out in this video, the draft class. Oh boy, is it ever a stacked draft class. We got good old Don Cherry, how's it going buddy? He absolutely loves the Stags, which are good Canadian kids and he is with the top seven prospects for this year's draft. Vinquist, Kilzakin, Hiroyuki, Zap, Kako, Hughes, and Bobby Lemieux. That's awesome. They're at the top prospects game. We got Ron McLean and good old grapes, Don Cherry. Maybe I got to call up my boy Don Cherry and get some uh, draft insider information here on these prospects. But if that Nashville pick turns out to be a top pick, I'm happy. Even if it's in the top 10, because I'm thinking we might have a top three or a top five lottery pick. If we get into the top three, we're going to get Hiroyuki Hughes or probably Kako. And then anything after three, I would love to get Bobby Lemieux. That would be awesome because we already have quite a few really solid forwards like Chubbs. Obviously we have Sujimoto. So there's a lot, there's a lot of exciting things here to work on. But I do have something very excited to announce that I have partnered with a very talented graphic designer to bring you more things like this. And especially like that Michael Dal Cole thing you saw at the start of the video. So so we got B Fudge on Twitter. He reached out to me and he's going to be the official graphics guy for the Saskatchewan Stags. Now 2018 first round six overall, Valery Chubasov from the KHL. He, he shoots right 5'10", 172, similar style to Mike Gartner. So you're going to be seeing a lot more of these graphics. We're going to be doing some videos, some really, really cool things. So this is going to bring a whole new element to the franchise mode. Most trades will have a little uh, sports net thing coming up it's gonna be really really cool so stay tuned for that go follow him on Twitter he's the man and this is gonna be really really exciting for the franchise mode now I am gonna make a couple of trades in this video however we got some comments to go over first and these ones are kind of funny Mike says the real question is where is our high franchise version of our Lord and Savior James Avagetti Honestly, I miss saying that name so much. James Vigetti has retired from professional hockey. He is now a successful restaurant owner in Seattle. He's opened up a few Italian places. Going back to his roots, uh, we're going to leave James Vigetti as a legend in the past. If you want to go visit his restaurants in Seattle, by all means, go nuts. But right now, we're leaving him in the past. And uh, he's a legend, but we're not bringing him back. Sorry to disappoint. Now, speaking of this Nashville Predators pick, I spoke in the last video, I said that in our Seattle franchise mode, we ended up getting a pick that turned out to be, I think it was Agency or it was Big Mac Franklin McKenzie. Well, it turned out that VNX underscore K9, he said, you gave away Nicholas Jalmerson to Philadelphia for their second overall pick, which turned out to be Agency. They got robbed. Absolutely, they did. The guy scored over 900 goals for our franchise mode. But at the start of the year, Philadelphia came at us with their first for Nicholas Jalmerson, kind of similar to what Nashville did with Ian Cole. And I said, hell yeah, absolutely we're doing that. No questions. Now there are some trades that came at us in the last video. And one guy said Benino for fast is a good trade. He usually gets stat growth and he sims well. So maybe we'll have a look at that right now. So just like Elliot Friedman tweeted, we have a trade in place to acquire Michael Dal Cole. Now it's going to be Nick Benino. Uh, we're going to go back and get Jesper Fast. Obviously, he's got 21 goals this year. The Rangers flipped him to the New York Islanders, but Jesper Fast and Michael Dal Cole are going to be coming to Saskatchewan. Now Michael Dal Cole was a former fifth overall pick. So is he technically a prospect? No, but I still think there's something left in the tank. Nick Benino and Nick. 
Delorier, a couple of Nicks, a fourth and a seventh. I feel like this is pretty even. However, I'm not 100% sure it's gonna go through. Michael Del Cole has that little bit of trade value and Nick Benino and Nick Delorier pretty much have nothing. Let's see if we can get it without the seventh. I don't wanna give up that many picks because obviously the drafts are very crucial early on. I'd have to add a little bit more. Let's see if this will go through trade rejected. Okay, that's fine. Now I said I didn't want to add any more picks, so what I'm thinking is we'll add some lower end picks, maybe a seventh, see if that'll go through, trade rejected, okay. So maybe I'll have to add something else, another pick. I know I'm kind of contradicting myself. I said I don't want to give up any more picks. Let's give up a fifth for 2021. All right, this is a lot. Now, if this doesn't go through, I think I'm just gonna add like a third or something. Wow, they rejected that, are you serious? Okay, so here we are now. I've kind of made it a little bit too much, but I feel like this is the only way it's gonna go through is make it a third instead of us giving them three picks. We're just gonna give them one and we're gonna try to see if we can squeeze a sixth in there. I think this should go through. Michael Del Cole and Jesper Fast, are you gonna be coming to the newest expansion team? Trade accepted, baby. Welcome to the Saskatchewan Stags. Now, I wanna talk about Michael Del Cole and explain my reason for this trade. Just after being traded, Elliot Friedman got him on the phone and this is what Michael Del Cole had to say about the New York Islanders. I just feel like I'm not wanted there. The staff has been great, but it seems like they don't know how to develop young players. It's tough. Well, welcome to Regina. I know you're gonna be playing in the AHL this year, but here's my thoughts on Michael Dal Cole. He's 22 years old, former top pick, obviously needed a change of scenery. That was no surprise to anyone. He's got four games of NHL experience under his belt, only one shot, that's gotta change. But this team is so good. Our team in the AHL, I think we're like, close to 40 wins already or we're just killing it where yeah 43 and 15 so we're absolutely on fire now if he gets some confidence he gets a lot of a lot of experience in the ahl he plays alongside chubby on the first line oh boy this could be good now i'm not saying he's gonna grow to 90 overall but he could be a good like you know third line scorer for us if he was 24 25 i'd probably say no to this deal but michael dow cole he still has something left in the tank and I'm a fan of giving players a second chance. So Michael Dow Cole, welcome to the squad. I hope that this team goes all the way because we are absolutely killing it right now. And we're gonna have to make a couple more trades in this video, one involving Scott Darling and maybe one involving Yaroslav Halak. But here's how Jesper Fast kind of sits in our lineup. I think I'm going to go like that. Jesper Fast for the first line and then yeah, we'll probably go something like this and and then you like that? I don't know. I want to give James Neal a decent amount of ice, but I think I'd rather have Boone Jenner up there, to be honest. He's got 24 points. James Neal has 24 points as well. Um, Matthew Perot is actually doing pretty damn good. Um, do, 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 do. I don't really have... I have a bunch of like really good third liners. So it's kind of hard to put someone on the fourth line. So this has been something in the comments that has been kind of split 50-50. Some of you guys said, yeah, we should trade Yaro Halak. He has a lot of trade value, but a lot of you guys said maybe hold on to him but I'm leaning more towards the trade. One hole on our team is a first line center. Right now we have Valtteri Filpula. That's not gonna cut it. So Jaroslav Halak has a decent amount of trade value and he's actually a decent overall as well at, at 84. He's 33 years old, so obviously he's gonna wanna go to a contending team. He hasn't really had any chance at a Stanley Cup. He came close when he basically stole the starting job from Carey Price back in the day, which was crazy. But we're gonna send him and and Slater Cuckoo, uh, Slater Cuckoo, 25 years old. He's actually a decent defenseman. He's not playing on our team. However, he probably should be. But I'm going to send him back to his drafted team, the Tampa Bay Lightning, in exchange for Anthony Sorelli and Michael Neuverth. Now, you're probably saying, whoa, 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 what are you doing? They would never trade Anthony Sorelli. What are you talking about? Well, Michael Neuverth isn't really doing that great as a backup. You can see his numbers really aren't that fantastic. So to go on a deep playoff run, if anything was to happen to Vasilevsky, going with Michael Neuverth would probably be disastrous. Now, if they get Yaroslav Halak, that's a huge win. That's a really good one-two punch between the pipes. 
Now, looking at their defensive core, aside from their big top three, they don't really have a lot going on. They have Dan Girardi, Eric Cernak, and a really a bunch of, you know, mid-70 overall guys. So getting another 79, almost 80 overall guy in their lineup is definitely going to help. Now, as for their centers, Sorelli's kind of buried behind Stamkos, Point, and Johnson, and they got Matthew Joseph as well. So there's really not a whole lot of room for him to grow, even though Braden Point's not playing this year because he held out on a contract, uh, he's still playing third line minutes. So he's going to come to our team. Uh, we're going to make this trade pretty much straight up. I think we can probably squeeze a pick out of this as well. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe. I'm seeing the trade value is a little bit in our favor. If we add a sixth, will that go through? I mean, we're kind of sitting on a gold mine with Yaroslav Halak. He's not going to be here next year, so I thought, why not send him to a contending team? If he wins the cup, awesome. I mean, we have uh, Big T, Big Germ, whatever you want to call him, Big Tam, uh, Big Tam Slam. I don't know what we're going to call him, but he's having a phenomenal year in the AHL this year, which means we have to trade Scott Darling, but we can do that after. So Yaroslav Halak has a decent amount of trade value. He's not going to be back for next year. Will this trade go through? Trade accepted. We believe this transaction will contribute to our success here in Tampa Bay. We are accepting your trade offer. Anthony Sorelli, right after being traded, we got him on the phone. He says, it's exciting to go to a new franchise where I'm going to be the first line center. I'm confident we can build something special here. Welcome, Anthony Sorelli. Welcome, my dude. I'm very excited to have you. Teams have to make sacrifices to go win a Stanley Cup. Now, giving up Anthony Sorelli is something that they could afford. They are so deep down the middle, especially with Braden Point. Uh, hopefully, he signs for next year. But Anthony Sorelli, Suji Moto, and yes, Jesper Fast on the first line. You absolutely love to see it. Matthew Perot, Valtteri Filippula, killer. Uh, we're probably going to go like this, actually. Neil, Jenner, and Beagle. That's fine. Defensively, didn't change too much, except we're going to go like this. Our defense is pretty weak, actually. And then between the pipes, Michael Neuverth and James Reimer. There you go. All right, so we kind of buried Valtteri Filippula down here because Matthew Perot actually has pretty good face-offs at an 80. So we're going to move uh, Oscar Sundquist up there with killer and we have one more tiny trade to make and that's going to be scott darling we're pretty much going to get whatever we can for him and then we're going to get a bunch of simulation done do a season wrap up and then we're also going to hop in and see where we pick in the draft so scott darling he has a big contract we're probably going to have to retain some salary even if it's like 500k whatever uh, he's making 4.1 i basically want to do this so that jeremy tamlin can get number one minutes in the AHL. Ooh, okay, so this actually might work because they don't really have a solid backup goalie where we could give them Scott Darling to back up Braden Holtby for the playoffs. Okay, all right, let's see what we can do here. Maybe we can make this a little bit bigger than what we thought. Uh, let's see if they have anyone they want to give up. I mean, we don't have a lot of trade value to work with, but if I, ooh, Andre Burakoski. Okay, all right, we could work with this. We could definitely work with this. Getting some young players who need a change of scenery. I like this a lot. Former first round pick, Andre Burakoski, doesn't have a ton of trade value, but he can go, he can go in and immediately hop in to be one of our top six guys. If we have to give up Valtteri Filpula, why not? Um, or even Oscar Sunquist. Valtteri Filpula actually has some trade value, which is crazy. But I think we're gonna have to retain some cap. Obviously, they're right at the cap uh, ceiling there. So let's retain a decent amount, maybe a million on Scott Darling. Will that go through? Uh, that will that will go through. So. Valtteri Filippula and Scott Darling for Burakoski. They get a backup goal. They get a center that has some playoff experience. Do they need a center? I guess they kind of do, actually. Behind Backstrom and Kuznetsov, they have Lars Eller, and that's about it. So I guess it kind of makes sense, even though it seems like it's a little bit crazy. I'm going to have to go ahead and add a pick here just to make it a little more realistic. I know we're getting young players for aging players, but at the end of the day, it kind of makes sense for this team. So let's go ahead and give them a fourth for 2021. That should go through. Let's see. Andre Burakoski, trade reject. Okay, so they don't want to take on extra cap. That's fine. So I'm going to retain basically as much as I can on Valtteri Filpula for this year. Let's see if that'll change it, although his contract ends at this year. Will that push it over the edge? Trade rejected. Okay, that's fine. So I've tried a whole bunch on this trade. You just saw trade rejected, trade rejected, trade rejected. So we're not going to get Burakoski. 
although I'd love to, I might be able to swing it with just Valtteri Filipula and maybe a pick. I want to make this trade go through. I really, really do. I mean, that seems like it would go through. Valtteri Filipula, a prospect, and a fourth. That doesn't really seem like a lot for Burakowski. You know what? I think the comments would rip me apart if I was to make that deal after getting uh, Anthony Sorelli. I think I'm going to hold off on that. All right, so let's go ahead and send him to the LA Kings. He's going to be the backup behind Jonathan Quick for a fourth. We have to retain 500K. Will this go through? Trade rejected. Okay, let's see if we can get a little bit more. Maybe if we take about a million. If not, I'll literally just get whatever I can. If it's a fifth, a sixth, whatever. I will take a fourth, though. There you go. All right, so we take a little bit of cap on, but it's not the end of the world because we don't really have anyone to pay and everyone on our team is basically not going to be here next year except for like a handful of players. So there you go. We made three quick trades. I think our AHL trade really did work out with Michael Dow Cole and now Big Germ gets to be the starting goalie in the AHL, which is always good. And then here's how our team is looking now. Anthony Sorelli, Suji Moto, and Jesper Fast. That's awesome. I'm going to write down their stats to see how they do uh, in the last 20 games of the regular season, but I feel like we did pretty good there. What would you guys rate this uh, trade deadline out of 10? All right, so our new look first line is ready to go. I wrote down all their points. I want to see how many points they get in the last 20 games of the regular season. So we're going to get a whole bunch of simulation done. I don't think we're going to be offered any more trades, but let's go here against the Vegas Golden Knights. And then we got a game against the New York Islanders. So we're going to see if Nick Bonino or Jesper Fast scores against their old team. First period against the Golden Knights and lots of goals. Matthew Perot and Stuji Moto. There you go. Shea Theodore, Max Pacioretty, and Zykov. Five goals in the first period, going into period number two. Nothing going on. And in the third, they double up on a six to three. Valtteri Filipula scores the only goal of the third, even though we outshot them quite a bit. The only goal of the third for us, I should add. Louis Deming on waivers. No, thank you. So after they got Yarrow Halak, obviously they had to put Louis Deming on waivers. I highly doubt he gets picked up. Let's go here up against the New York Islanders. This is one of the only slow sim games I want to see. And we actually have a game against the Blues as well on the 19th. So we will do that. I am very anxious, though, to see where we pick in the draft. That's kind of all I want to do right now. Let's go. Period number one. Is Jesper Fast going to score? 0-0. Zero, zero. We're out shooting our opponent 15-8. to eight. All right. Still nothing, nothing. We might be going to a shootout here, which we might intervene. Brock Nelson on Michael Neuverth. Never mind. Oh, 2 nothing. Matthew Barzell. All right. Even though we're out shooting him like crazy, what's our problem here? Casey Sezikis. I think it's just straight up our goaltending and our defense just really isn't good enough. I mean, 40 shots to 25 and we can't muster up one goal. That sucks. Well, we know our offense is sick. Uh, just our defense and goalie can't keep the puck out of the net. And 44 shots and we get shut out. 45 shots. That's insane. Well, that's a huge kick in the nuts. However, our AHL team is doing absolutely nasty. 45, 15, and 4. So you're going to be seeing some crazy point totals for this year. This year might not be as crazy as year four and year five. Big five nothing shutout win. But I've done some tests and there has been multiple years where I've had players get over 130 points each year. So there's going to be a lot of points. It's going to be a lot of fun to see. We'll go check out the draft rankings after. Up against the St. Louis Blues, I believe we're 1-1. One one. I hope you guys are keeping track. I want to get like an all-time record thing going against the team that stole our expansion in 1967. Bunch of bastards. First period, 1-1. One, one. Valtteri Filipiela just lighting it up. Tarasenko scores, period number two. All right, 3-1, baby. James the real deal. Freaking Neil and Kristen Juice. There you go, St. Louis. Get out of here. Ben Lovejoy, the sniper on the empty net, Thomas Noshek, and, but wait, Braden Shen, the Saskatchewan-born boy. He scores on Michael Neuverth. 43 shots again, so we're just peppering the goalies. We just can't keep the puck out of our net, but we're 2-1 and one now against the Blues, which is always nice. We're going to slow Sam one last game, and that's going to be up against the Chicago Blackhawks. Now, I got to say, when I said there's a lot of ego accounts, I didn't think it'd be this crazy. There's like 10 ego accounts for Sujimoto. There's a whole bunch for Hulkenberg. There's just a ton. It's kind of crazy. So I don't know if I'm going to be featuring a lot of people on Twitter, but there is so many of these ego accounts. It's ridiculous. 
I say that because we're about to go up against the Hawks, and I've been getting DMs from Finn Seidenberg and Hulkenberg the whole nine yards. It's kind of funny. So the second last game of the year we play against the Hawks, and it's kind of funny because our AHL team plays against the Hawks AHL team as well. So let's go here. Hopefully our AHL team can win. They have a way better shot than we do. We've actually cracked 30 wins, so it's not that bad. Period number one, two to one. All right, Thomas Hickey, how you doing? Hulkenberg and Anisimov, they score, making it 2-1. All right, we tie it up 2-2, Boone Jenner. And there it is, a big old third period goal from the Japanese sensation. We've got to come up with a nickname for him. Sujimoto, he scores. That's a GWG, and that's another victory. And we beat the Rockford Ice Hogs as well, 4-3. So there you go. Take that, Chicago final game against Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins and we drop it four to one. It's actually quite a bit better than how I thought but look at Nashville 75 points. All right so Montreal was really bad at 68 points. 62 for New Jersey so we have the third best odds to win the draft lottery which is good. 75 points for Nashville really isn't great so they're bottom 10. But Sujimoto with 58 points, 33 goals. Imagine what's going to happen when this guy actually has some people to play with. He's going to light it up. He's now 85 overall. Now, there's a chance that Sujimoto could move to medium franchise or even drop down to, like, high elite. I'm very interested to see how this guy is going to grow. Jesper Fast with a quiet 28-goal year, 50 points. This guy could be back for next year, so that was a great trade for us. Uh, 50 points, that is a career high. 28 goals, damn. So he had, let's do some quick math here, 50 minus 34. So he had 16 points in the uh, 20 games that he played with us, which really isn't that bad. Sujimoto had 42 points, so he had 16 points as well. I think so. Math, yes, maybe. 16 points for each of those guys in 20 games, and then Anthony Sorelli, he had 13 points, I think. Yeah, 13. Yeah, math. Okay, he had 13 points uh, in 20 games. So not bad at all for our top line. I'm very happy with this. I'm not saying they're going to be together next year, but Anthony Sorelli, hoping he can grow because he's got that high top nine. He could be pretty good for us. Alex Killorn there. These guys obviously know each other from their days in Tampa Bay. Killer had 44 points. Matthew Perot with his man bun had 43. That's not bad. Valtteri Filpula with 42. That's kind of of surprising we actually put up some decent numbers James Neal was third on our team in goal scoring with 23 Adam Larson there was our highest scoring defenseman at 26 points and then a lot of defensemen down here so Ben Lovejoy with two Genos on the year what a sniper a pure sniper as for attendees, 16 and 16 for Michael Neuberth and 7 and 14 for my man James Reimer. But Sujimoto, a pretty damn good rookie year, if I do say so myself. So let's have a look here at the entire NHL real quick. Uh, I'm expecting at least a couple people to have over 100 points. All right, so we got two. 51 goals for Tyler Sagan. He not only wins the Art Ross, but also wins the Rocket Richard, being the only 50 goal scorer this year. It's quite a year for Tyler Sagan. Absolute man rocket. Uh, we got Nikita Kucherov there, 102. Stammer. So you can even see the adjustments to the sliders really, really worked. There's, what, 20 players with over a point per game? So that's pretty awesome. For some reason, Alex Radulov always seems to sim really, really well. He's a beast. Uh, as for rookie skaters, where do we finish? Ooh, we finished fifth in rookie scoring. 58 points, one behind Andreas Janssen. Uh, Brady Kachuk, 35 goals. Brady Kachuk, the better Kachuk. Uh, we got Anthony Hulkenberg there with 67 and Elias Pedersen with 68. So it's going to be down to the wire for these two guys. Uh, where is the other Berg? Where is he? Way down here. There's a lot of really good rookies this year. Holy shit. Uh, Seidenberg, 12 goals, 10 assists. For a defenseman, that's a little bit weird, but there he is. As for goalies, let's have a look here. Vasilevsky leading the way with 12 shutouts. Oh my god. Jordan Binnington down here, 40 and 24. And rookie goalies, is there anyone going to challenge Elias Pettersson for the Calder Trophy? Jordan Binghamton, yeah, obviously he's a rookie. He could win, he could easily win the Calder. Uh, Carter Hart, damn, he played pretty good, so... 
Lots of points in the NHL, lots of exciting players here. So let's go all the way up to the draft. I'm hoping that our AHL team, oh my God, look at Chubbs, 43-24 for 85 points. Uh, that's awesome. He's now an 80 overall. So he's definitely going to be a top line player for us next year. That's awesome. I forget how many points Michael Dow Cole had. Can someone go check that out? Uh, medium top nine, 12 goals, 26 assists. He's now a plus 11, which is nice. But Chubbs, what a year. Oh, my God. Uh, as for goalies, see how Big Germ did. 44 and 17. Thanks for coming out. How are you? Seven shutouts. Uh, look at Garrett Sparks there, 13 and 2. I'm hoping this team can go on a deep postseason run. We're going to pay close attention to them. And I'm hoping that Tampa Bay can win a cup for Yaroslav Halak's sake. We got the Belleville Senators in round number one. We're familiar with this team on the failed Ottawa franchise that we just did. Uh, okay, so we lose game one. It's all good. No worries. Come on, let's get it back here. Chubbs, need a big game from you. There you go. Michael Dal Cole, three points in two games. a boy. Love to see it. Let's see if we can go up here. Another another big W. Chubbs has five points in three games. Can we close it out here in Belleville? Four to one. Patrick Eves, the vet. The veteran. Look at that grizzled beard. Half the guys on our team can't even grow a beard. This guy's got an absolute sasquatch looking beard on him up against the rochester americans which i believe is the buffalo sabers affiliate team you lose 2-1 in overtime in game one come on boys i need a deep calder run here a deep run seven to five that's a lot of goals game number three can we go out on top four three overtime win patrick eaves with the veteran presence there leading the way and that's another win, one nothing. That's Jeremy Tamlin all day. Big germ, the six foot nine sensation. And there you go. We close out round number two, four to one. Easy work, easy, easy. We're up against Florida's AHL team here in Springfield. Let's go round number three. Started off with a big W. That's awesome. We could very. I'm actually not gonna jinx it. I'm not gonna jinx it. I'm not gonna say it. As we lose a game. Oh my God. I might have already jinxed it. Oh no. Going into game number three, a big win. There you go. Every single game has been a one-goal game here. It's going to be a tight series. Another one-goal game. We're, we're tied up 2-2. This is a must-win. Come on, boys. Chubbs, I need you. Another one-goal game. Oh, no. Come on, boys. Come on. Play for Chubbs. Play for Patrick Eves. Oh, my God. What a close series. Every single game was a one-goal game. We get eliminated in the conference finals, unfortunately. Speaking of the conference finals, Yaroslav Halak and the Tampa Bay Lightning are tied up 2-2 against Columbus, so hopefully they can pull out a Stanley Cup win. That's what I'm hoping for, get Yaroslav Halak his win so that trade makes more sense. So maybe they won't regret trading Anthony Sorelli. But that's not the case at all. The Dallas Stars win their second Stanley Cup in franchise history on the back of Tyler Sagan, and the team that we lost to in the AHL Conference Finals goes on to win the Calder Cup. All right, so now this is it. This is all we've been waiting for. This is it. Everyone take a big deep breath. This is where we find out where we pick in the draft. I probably should have went to see where Nashville finished, but I know it was bottom 10 for sure. Maybe even bottom five. Come on, baby. Where do we draft? Please, please draft lottery. Be kind to us. Please give me two top fives. Maybe at least one top five. Oh my god, we pick number one. Oh my god, we win the draft lottery. And we have the seventh. Oh baby. Sujimoto, welcome to the squad. We also pick number seven as well. Oh my god, this is awesome. I saw Saskatchewan at number seven, and then I realized that was a Nashville pick, and I kept going up, up, and up, and I was like, shit, where are we? And we picked number one. The Saskatchewan Stags have the first overall pick in this year's NHL entry draft. Oh baby, Team Tank, I'm all about it. So Jack Hughes or Hiroyuki, what do we do here? I know how good Jack Hughes is. Like, he is absolutely nasty. 102 points in 65 games. He's 100% bona fide first line franchise center. But Hiroyuki, he's damn good as well. Now, earlier in the year, he was the number one consensus pick over Jack Hughes. 
I kind of wish we had the number two overall pick, to be honest with you, because Jack Hughes is probably going number one. We could trade down. So say we trade down the number two. I think Carolina has it. I don't I don't really remember. But let's say Carolina has it. We trade down to number two. We get like a second round pick or whatever. We want Hiroyuki. Hiroyuki's our guy. But say that Carolina picks Hiroyuki and then we have to pick Jack Hughes, which I'm saying it like it's a bad thing, but I really want Hiroyuki because I think it'd be really, really cool to get him. Um, obviously, to have that Japanese connection with Hiroyuki and Sujimoto, that'd be so sick. Um, and then there's also a surprise in year four, another Japanese player. I'm not going to spoil it, but you guys can maybe do some research. Um, maybe check out Pavel Barber on YouTube. You can kind of get maybe a better sense on who is in this draft. So it's going to be very simple. In the comments, tell me who we should get and why. I think for the storyline, I think it's going to be really awesome to get Hiroyuki. And I think he's still 81, like, high elite out of the draft. So he's pretty nasty. And Jack Hughes, I mean, I think he's 82 high elite. So either way, I mean... I don't know. It's going to be fun. I really wanted Bobby Lemieux. I know how nasty he is, but I think we're going to get a really, really good player here. I highly doubt Bobby Lemieux drops to seven. It's just probably not going to happen. So we could maybe go and get a guy like Bowen Byram, who I think is like 78 right out of the draft. Um, Cole Caulfield as well might not be bad. We have a ton of forwards, though. I really want to pick a defenseman. So maybe trading down a few spots and picking Bowen Byram isn't the worst thing. Uh, but maybe a guy like Vinny Zapp. I don't think it'd be a terrible idea to trade down and get Bowen Byram. We hit the lottery with either Jack Hughes or Hiroyuki, so I think it'd be smart for us to get a top elite forward and a really good elite defenseman as well. I mean, we won the lottery and the Nashville pick is pretty much free candy. Thanks, Ian Cole. I'm happy about this. Very, very happy. Henrik Zetterberg, Chara Kunitz, Derek Roy, they all retired. Bugsy Ryan Malone finally calls it quits. So in the next video, we are going to hop into the draft. Um, I want to mention, I've seen a few comments of people saying, dude, you gotta adjust your scout. What are you doing? Ah, unsubscribe. Oh my God. But I'm not doing scouting this time. I've explained it in episode number one. I'm going to turn off scouting. I'm not going to assign any scouts. We're going to make it as difficult as we possibly can. It's going to be somewhat of a blind draft. I don't want to see gems. I don't want to see high elites. I don't want to see anything. So it's going to make it way more challenging. That's my goal for this franchise mode. So, so in the next video, we're going to hop into the draft. It's going to be an exciting one. I want, ooh, look at how, look at Sujimoto already in 86. That's awesome. He's growing. That is so cool. I've never had a low franchise guy before, so it's interesting. 86 overall. That's great. Jesper Fast grew to an 81. Anthony Sorelli still an 80. Let's see about the AHL. Did any one of those guys grow? Um, where did Chubbs go? <laughs> Hello? Is he alive? Where is he? Michael Dalcole is still a 74 overall, but where did Chubbs go? I don't know where he went. <laughs> I hope he comes back soon. That's weird. Maybe it's the... I have no idea. I'm sure he'll be back. Uh, maybe he just went back to Russia real quick. I don't know where he went. But let's check out the awards real quick, and then we will end off this video. It's been a long one. It's been a fun one, though. So Stanley Cup goes to Dallas. Um, Tampa Bay wins the Presidents, and obviously Dallas wins the Clarence, and it was against Tampa. So Yarrow Halak comes so close. Sorry, buddy. Art Ross goes to Tyler Sagan. The Hart goes to Tyler Sagan. The Norris goes to Drew Doughty. The Lady Bing, so that's three pieces of hardware for Tyler Sagan. EP wins the Calder. Oh my god, Sagan wins four major awards with a Conn Smythe. The Vesna goes to John Gibson. Vasileski. Bill Masterton goes to Carl Gunnarsson. Okay. Ryan Getzlaff wins the Frank J. Selkie. The Ted Lindsay goes to Tyler Sagan. And the Rocket Richard. So that's what? One, two, three four, five, six. So six of the, what, nine major awards? He wins six of them? That is quite a year for Tyler Sagan. Holy crap. So I'm just interested to see where we finished, how many spots we moved up in the draft. So we finished third last. 
and the Predators. So we actually lost with the Predators. They moved down to seventh. I didn't remember seeing who else it was in the draft lottery. I was just so pumped to see that we picked number one. So we definitely won the draft lottery. That is absolutely awesome. I know I say it a lot, but you absolutely love to see it. So in the next video, we're going to hop into the draft. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'm so excited for this NHL draft. Hiroyuki or Hughes, what do we choose? That rhymed. I didn't even mean to do that. I'll see you guys in the next video.